They say that once we reach a certain age, we as human beings stop being receptive to new things. I mean, there is truth to the popular phrase that you can't teach an old dog new tricks or always stuck in the past. Take me, for example. As a huge music fan, I haven't come across a new artist that I've genuinely liked in years. I'm still listening to the same old glam and grunge bands of the 80s and 90s. And as awesome as Cody Rhodes defeating Roman Reigns was for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship in WrestleMania 40, it just didn't enthrall me the same way as seeing the Macho Man, Randy Savage, and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat battle for the Intercontinental title in their epic match in WrestleMania 3. And this would most likely explain as well why I have never been able to truly get into another new Transformers series or media since Transformers Prime well over 10 years ago. But I guess there's another saying that's true. Never say never. Look, let's get one thing clear. I get it. As a 40 plus 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 year old guy, cartoons or movies about transforming robots really shouldn't matter to me as much as they do. But what can I say? Like many of you, these robots in disguise made such a huge impression on me as a kid that the love has just grown immensely into what it is today. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, I have enough awareness to know that my sensibilities and tastes as a grown-up differ greatly from when I was younger. I mean, if I knew nothing about Transformers today and watched the original G1 cartoon for the first time, I would most likely not fall in love with the franchise like I did way back in the 80s. Anyway, I say that to say this. My initial thought after seeing the first trailer of Transformers 1 was basically, meh, not for me. I mean, I was disappointed. But I got that this was really made for today's kids who had been raised on a steady diet of quippy dialogue full of jokes and one-liners thanks to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and so on. But ultimately, I just didn't care. After Michael Bay slowly but surely stomped out my excitement overseeing Transformers on the big screen, movie after movie, I just wasn't excited and earmarked Transformers 1 as something to wait for on streaming. And then a month or so ago, Paramount started doing special advanced screenings of the movie, and the general feedback I got was that it was good. No, more than good. Great. And so little by little, my curiosity and interest began to grow, which led us to a few days ago when a viewer of my channel, Mark Serbo, was kind enough to invite me and my wife to a special advanced screening of the movie by Paramount Pictures Philippines, which I readily and thankfully accepted. And to cut to the chase, I loved it. But that's quite a general statement, isn't it? So let's dive in a little deeper. And don't worry, this is a non-spoiler review as I won't discuss any major details of the actual story. Oh, and just so you know, this is my very first attempt at writing a review for any movie. So I hope I'm able to get all my thoughts and points across. Your feedback would be very much appreciated. Now with that out of the way, what made this movie so great for me? Well, I'd like to boil it down to three main points. First of all, the premise. In a nutshell, Transformers 1 is the origin story of, well, the Transformers, and more specifically the stories of the well-known and, dare I say, iconic leaders of the opposing Autobot and Decepticon factions, Optimus Prime and Megatron. And in this story, they start out as lowly worker bots Orion Pax and D-16. Which, if you're wondering, is a reference to Megatron's designation in the Japanese Transformers toyline as Destron No. 16. And the two of them are buddies, brothers, living in a society of have and have-nots, or in this case, those who can transform and those who can't. And together with fellow bots Elita and B, go off on a grand adventure to discover the truth behind their world. And of course, we all know how things ultimately turn out. Pax and D-16 have a falling out, and thus Prime and Megatron are born. It's not a new or fresh story by any stretch. I mean, the idea of Prime and Megatron having a shared history and friendship, as is, for a lack of a better word, a cased system in Cybertron, has been explored in many different iterations of Transformers, to varying degrees. From Cain and Abel, Romulus and Remus, the story of brothers having a falling out, often to murderous results, is a tale as old as time that is told over and over again. And rightfully so, because it is a story that many of us can relate to, whether pertaining to an actual brother, stepbrother, or a very close friend. The falling out, that is, not the murdering. 
Which is why with such a simple and timeless premise, Transformers 1 is so relatable to a general audience which right out of the gate is a win in my book. So with the basic premise set, the next important point is in the delivery and that is done through the characters in the story. Now unfortunately, I can't really go too deep into this one without going into spoiler territory. But from the trailer, you can tell that Orion Pax is far from the traditional stoic and serious prime that we know. He is less polished, bordering on irreverent, but more importantly, Pax is an idealist and a dreamer. As opposed to D16, who is more by the book, reserved, and a realist. And there's a quick bit in the trailer wherein Prime attempts to pull off a little Star-Lord bird gesture to an authority figure until he's abruptly stopped and punched in the face by D-16 to keep him from getting into trouble. While it seems done just for laughs, for me this simple scene gives a good look into the dynamic of their relationship, with D-16 always having to be the responsible one looking out for Pax. Then there is Elita who honestly had me initially cringing as yet another one-note girl boss, Mary Sue, who is better than everyone else. But she surprisingly turned out to be my favorite of the group. Not because she was so awesome at kicking ass, although to be fair, she was, but because she showed her true awesomeness in more relatable and effective ways. And as much as I'd like to expound on that, well, I can't for spoilers sake. So I'll just leave it with the saying that behind every great man, there is a great woman. No, Elita? No prime. And finally, B127, or B, who was basically the source of almost all the cringe that I felt from the first trailer. I'm not gonna lie, all that you saw in said trailer and more is still in the movie. But you know what? I didn't mind. After years of having a silent B who talked through the radio, this is more than a welcome change for me. Yes, he had a lot of jokes and gags, but for the most part, I found myself entertained. Plus, his potential character growth and development in future movies is something I look forward to. And these four are of course not the only Transformers in the movie as there are a good number of fairly fleshed out and supporting characters as well. Bottom line, Transformers 1 is populated by real characters, not caricatures like the Bay films. And while they mostly start off as cliche archetypes, I think they each evolve into real personalities that we can all relate to root for, and in other cases, despise. And my final point goes back to the whole this is not my Transformers. And yes, it most definitely isn't. And that's not a bad thing. As I mentioned earlier, the tone and delivery really is tailor-made for today's sensibilities. But this movie knows how to take itself seriously as well. Despite a relatively light and humorous first act to set the stage, the second and most definitely third act is all business. The writers make it known that they do have a substantial and poignant story to tell, and in my opinion, land it in spades. More importantly though, as is the case with many modern stories based on older properties, Transformers 1 doesn't set out to trash or destroy the original in order to make itself look better. Aside from a ton of subtle easter eggs to keep older eagle-eyed fans invested, in my honest opinion, there is a deep sense of respect and reverence to all the stories, characters, and lore that came before. The original G1 cartoon, all the shows after, the comics, everything. All 40 years of it. Which is the strongest argument for why I think Transformers 1 is the best Transformers movie ever. And that's including the 86 movie. And it's not even close. Look. All nostalgia and awesome 80s soundtrack aside, at its core, the 86 movie was a way to introduce new characters and to sell new toys, which wasn't bad per se. But in order to do so, they basically spit on the past by needlessly and irreverently killing off many original characters that we grew up with and loved, literally discarding them like trash. Yes, Transformers 1 is made for a new generation of fans to fall in love with, but it is also made with me, an old dog, in mind. It doesn't crap on my Transformers. It recognizes it, draws from it, and shows me new and exciting ways this beloved franchise can go. But is it a perfect movie? Of course not. Like I said, this isn't rocket science storytelling, and the twists, if you'd even call them that, are obvious from miles away. No, Prime does not see dead people. But as ironic as it is for a franchise best known for the tagline of more than meets the eye, the unexpected is not Transformer 1's bread and butter, but instead, it's in the manner in which the same tried and true story is told. 
While admittedly the pacing can feel in a bit of a rush, the main story elements are sound and key character beats are consistent. And the emotional moments, man, the emotional moments are in my opinion 100% earned, which is what matters in a good, no, great story. And that at its core is what Transformers 1 is to me, a great story that casual fans like my wife, old time fans like myself, and more importantly, potential future fans like my Pokemon crazed daughter whom I intend to take with me on a definite second watch can enjoy appreciate and love to close they say it's called transformers one because it's the first a new beginning which it is but more than that for me it's transformers one because it has the best potential to unite different fans from across the board especially the younger ones with a newfound love for transformers to drive the franchise for the next 40 years and beyond till all are one indeed indeed